Okay, this video is going to focus on y equals mx plus b, or our linear equation. And so, this can be a little confusing, because if you look at that, oh my gosh, there's all letters. What happened to numbers in that? Um, this is a really common way that you'll see equations written out. Okay? If you look, sometimes it's called slope-intercepts form, um, because what this equation does is it tells you what the slope is, and it tells you what the y-intercept is. Okay? On our reference chart, it's going to have that. At the very top, it'll say slope-intercept form, and it has y equals mx plus b. So you don't have to memorize this, but we do want to know what those mean. Um, for this video, I'm going to use red and blue. Mm, yeah. Okay. So the key here is this is an equation that we can use to find any value of x if I know y, or any value of y if I know x. Okay, this m will have a number in its place. It might be a number in the form of a fraction, it might be a whole number, it might be a decimal, but that m, we call it a coefficient because it's right before the x, represents our slope. Okay, or our constant rate of change. For this video, you're going to hear me abbreviate that as croc. Not an official math term. I just don't want to write this over and over again, okay? So constant rate of change, or our slope, will be this coefficient right before our x, okay? This over here, so this little plus b, is going to be our y-intercept. Okay, so that is where our graph is going to start. If I were to graph this, that is where it's going to cross the y um, axis. So if you were given a word problem, um, it'll give you the slope and it'll give you the y-intercept. So for example, um, if I want to go to the store and I want to buy, let's say we did this example at Costco, and I want to buy cans of soda, and let's say a can of soda cost, I'm going to keep it real easy, kind of expensive, but $2, okay? And I want to write an equation that represents this relationship, all right? If I know that each can of soda costs $2, I can write the equation using this example, because if each can of soda is $2, that is my constant rate of change. So my formula is going to be y equals, my slope is 2, x. And then if I don't buy any cans of soda, I'm not going to pay any money, okay? And so I'm not going to be adding anything after that. So it's basically plus zero. And so a lot of times you won't see this written. I'm going to do it dashed so you can kind of see it. Um, but a lot of times you won't even see it written, and it's just y equals 2x. So x is the number of sodas I'm going to buy. So in this situation, think about what y would represent. It's going to represent your total cost. So let's, let's see if that works. So if I look at this, um, let's say I buy one can of soda. How much money am I going to spend? Well, each can is one, so I'm going to spend $2. Two times one is two. Let's say that I buy five cans of soda. Well, if each one is $2, I'm going to do two times five, and I'm going to get ten. Okay, I'm going to do one more example. Still in the building. I just want to remind you, tomorrow is Autism Awareness Day. So we ask... Well, they're telling me it's Thursday. It is Thursday. So we ask that, never mind, disregard... Okay, so if I had this one, each can of soda is $4. Let's say it's really specialty soda you want to ship to your house, but you have to pay $3 to ship it to your house. 
So I don't care if you buy 100 cans of soda in this situation, I'm just going to tell you, it's $3 in shipping. You buy one can of soda, it's $3 in shipping. So if I wanted to write an equation that represents this situation, there is a constant rate of change, right? So I do have this coefficient here. Each can of soda uh, is $4. To the front each can of soda is $4. So that is my coefficient, right? That is my slope. Then I go up here and I see this y-intercept and it says plus b. Every time, I don't care if I buy 100 sodas or 5,000 sodas or one soda, I'm going to be having to spend $3 in shipping. So if I know this equation, then again, I could plug in or substitute. If I want to buy 10 cans of soda, I would do 10 times 4 because each can is $4, so 40 bucks, and then I have to pay that $3, so my total cost is 43 okay? So that kind of shows you how to set up the equation no matter what. Um, if I wanted to graph this, and I might even work backwards from a graph to an equation, my y-intercept is plus 3. Well, here's your y-axis. I'm going to cross the y-axis, or this graph will cross the y-axis at 3. If you think about it, that makes sense. When I pot and when I pay zero or when I buy zero cans of soda in this situation, I'm paying three dollars in shipping. When I buy one soda, I'm gonna be spending, well, let's see. One times four is four bucks for that soda, plus the three is seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Once you have two points, that is enough to graph a line. And that would be my graph. So my y-intercept would be plus 3. My constant rate of change would be 4. So see if you remember, how would I find if I wanted to just give you this graph and ask you what equation represents it? How would you do that? Well, I know my y-intercept is 3. That one's usually the easy one to see. It crosses the y-axis at 3. So I know my, my formula or my equation will be something x plus 3. We've got to figure out what that constant rate of change is. Okay, I know it's 4, but let's see where that comes from in our graph. If I look here, I went up 4, right? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I went over 1. Up 4, over 1. Okay? Sometimes you'll see hear that heard as rise over run. That will give you your constant rate of change or your slope. You'll hear it as change in y over change in x. My change in y, because here's my y-axis, was 4. My change in x is 1. Okay? You can think of it as rise over run. This isn't the best math way to say it. This is. But both get the same point across. As I'm going from one point on that line to another, I'm going up 4 over 1. 4 over 1 is just 4. Right? 4 whole numbers. So 4x plus 3. All right? Let me sketch a graph real fast for you, and then we'll do a table, and then that will um, be the end of this video. So, I'm just sketching a graph. Let's see if I have this graph. So, I would encourage you to pause the video and see if you can write an equation for this line. Okay, hopefully you've already tried it. We know it's going to be in this format. It's a constant rate of change because it has a straight line. So I need to figure out what my slope is. I need to figure out what my y-intercept is. And that will be enough to write this equation. So y equals my slope is my change in y over change in x. Or my rise, which is change in y. So up 2. My run is also 2. So my m or my slope is going to be 2 over 2 which we know simplifies to one whole. So I have 1x. I don't have to write that one, but I'm going to write it. So 1x. And then I look here, and I want to say plus b. Well, plus my y-intercept, where this line crosses the y-axis, is at negative 1. So I could say plus negative 1, or really the most simple way to write this would be y equals 1x minus 1. Okay? Keep in mind, if I just have 1x, I could just write it like this, because there's 1x, okay? Both of these give you the same answer. 
So that is our formula for the graph. Okay, last thing we're going to see is when I have it in a table. So let's, well, I'm going to go back to my soda example. Okay, X is going to be the number of sodas. Y is going to be my total cost. So I buy zero sodas. I still have to pay $3 in shipping. I'm going to use that example. I buy one soda. So if you remember from our example, and I'll go back. I made it real simple. Each can of soda is $4, and you pay $3 in shipping because it's fancy, fancy soda. So if each soda is $4, I'm buying one of those sodas. That's going to be 4 bucks plus the 3 in shipping. My total cost will be $7. Okay, I'm going to do one more. If I buy two sodas, each soda is $4, so that's $8 in soda, plus 3 will give me $11 total cost. Okay? I could graph this. I could take this, put it on the graph, and then find the equation. Or, if I want to write the equation of this, there is a constant rate of change because I know each soda is $4. So again, if I can figure out my slope and I can figure out my y-intercept, that is all I need to write this equation. So y equals, I need to find my slope, which we know is your change in y over your change in x. So if I look at the y, my change in y is plus 4. My change in x is plus 1. So my slope is change in y over change in x. My change in y is 4. My change in x is 1, which simplifies to 4. So there's 4x plus I need my y-intercept, okay? To find my y-intercept, it's wherever x is 0. Picture it on a graph. Here's my x-axis. When x is 0, that's where I'm hitting the y-axis. If x is 0, meaning I'm not moving left or right, wherever that graph is, is my y-intercept. So when x is 0, my graph is at where y is 3. So my y-intercept is plus Okay, I know this is a bit long of a video, but it is quite a bit of information. So I'm just going to review very, very quickly. You need to be comfortable basically converting between, you have your equation form, table, and graph. If I give you a graph, can you write the equation of a straight line? Well, find the slope, find the y-intercept, yes you can. If I give you a table, can you write the equation? Well, you can calculate the slope, change in y over change in x, find the y-intercept, so yes, you can. If I give you this equation, can you make a graph? Well, if you know the y-intercept and the slope is your change in y over change in x, yes, you can. All right, so a good way to practice this, I'm going to leave you with some practice problems. I'm going to give you an equation, and I'm going to ask that you make a table of data from it and that you draw a graph from it. And if you can do that then you, you have the concept, okay? So if I had this formula, can you graph it? Can you make a table of data? And then you would be good to go, okay? I'd encourage you to pause the video and then play to see if you can check it, okay? So hopefully by now you've already tried to do this. I'm going to draw the table of data from this so you have x and y, okay? I know that my y-intercept is negative 2, so when x is 0, my y is negative 2. And then I know my change in y over change in x is going to be 3, or 3 over 1. So my change in y will be 3, my change in x will be 1. So if I added 3 to this, I would get 1. If I add 1 to this, I get 1. Okay? If I add 3 again, 1 plus 3 is 4. I add 1 because my change in x is 1, I get 2. So there's my table. My graph is going to look something like this. So my y-intercept, that's always where I want to start when I graph, because I know for a fact my graph's going to cross the y-axis at negative 2. Then my constant rate of change is 3x, so I know I'm going to be going up 3 over 1. My change in y over change in x is 3 over 1. So I'm going to go up 3 over 1. Up 3 over 1. And that's going to be my graph. And that's just a real quick sketch. Okay? Um, this concept does take practice. I know it's a pretty abstract concept for us, um, but we will practice it more in class. So there you go.